Well by now, if you haven't played Resident Evil Village, I would highly suggest you do, because in today's video topic, we will be covering one of the highlights of this game, which is none other than Lady Alcina Dimitrescu, the giant vampiric countess of the region, who was known to drink human blood just to preserve herself. But as the title suggests, why was Alcina Dimitrescu almost perfect, emphasizing the word almost, and what do I mean by that was that she had all the prerequisites to be one of the best villains in this franchise, but still it just felt like there was something missing, which when I really do concentrate on it, I can figure out the specific factors as to why she was almost perfect. Quiet now, child. Adults are talking. Which we can begin with the preface of this game's release, because initially the hype for Resident Evil Village was at an all-time high. This is due to the increasing focus of highlighting Lady D and her castle, which is not a bad thing, because as a long-time Resident Evil fan, to showcase an enemy and have her grab the gaming community's attention so well was a great thing to have. Many social media outlets were raving for Lady D, perpetually pushing that hype train to another level, which I completely understand, because she's not your typical monster that we've seen in this franchise many times. She wasn't this crazed lunatic trying to make another virus. Instead, she was this haunting Victorian style looking character. And what made more of an emphasis was the fact that she stood at 9 feet 6 inches tall. That alone already caught the eye of many fans alike. And the fact that we learned that she'd be a stalker type antagonist within Resident Evil Village, that just made it even better. Stupid man thing! You won't live long, even if you run! Because in recent memory, Resident Evil has done a great job of making these type of monsters, more specifically Mr. X from RE2 Remake. So who's to say that Lady D wouldn't be able to not only meet expectations, but to surpass that experience we had against Mr. X? Ugh, so gauche. What do we care for bread and circuses? Well, so far, prior to the game's release, we had the chance to play the Maiden demo, where we're stuck within the Demetres castle, looking for a way out. Though short-lived was our playthrough, enough of an impact was made when we finally get this ending here. So we finally meet. <laughs> So you can imagine my hype when we find out that this seemingly giant humanoid being was able to have retractable claws, because it makes you wonder what other abilities she'll have once we face her when the game's released. Well that day finally came and introductions to Alcina de Metrasque would happen early in our playthrough, happening when we have that meeting between the four lords of the village alongside with Mother Miranda, highlighting the contrasting styles, mannerisms, and interactions between the villains of this game. And of course Alcina de Metrasque stood out above everybody else at this point, again still fueling the anticipation that we'll have once we encounter her more within her castle. Well rest assured after this meeting, it wouldn't be long until we come face to face with this haunting giant lady, and so far it's been quite a perfect introduction. Ah, now, let's take a look at him. Well, well, Ethan Winter. But here comes where that word, almost, plays a factor for Alcina Dimitrescu, because it could have been due to the initial amount of hype that, that was garnered for her character prior to the game's release. That huge amount of expectation needed to be met, because continuing to play this game, we had some instances or flashes of amazing moments that highlighted Lady D. One in particular left me awestruck when she suddenly opened the door right in front of us, and emphasizing how giant of a person she was, that haunting soundtrack that plays when she pops in, and the sheer magic Alice that she had for Ethan at that moment was truly terrifying. You lay your filthy man hands on my daughters, and now you even try to steal my property. How dare you! Rest while you can, because I will hunt you. And I will break you! But beyond that, we didn't really get to see much more of this style of encounter with her. Maybe unless if you count having Ethan's hand slashed off. But we already knew Ethan had this done before in RE7. So that's not something really new. Also, we do have her as a stalker type of antagonist for the remainder of our exploration in Castle Dimitrask. And memories start to flood in with Mr. X. And how we had to traverse through the RPD station knowing that this tyrant was just around the corner. So we had to be careful of not just sprinting down the hallway because he was programmed to hear footsteps, which in doing so would have him constantly alerted of our location. So expectations with Alcina Dimitrescu were similar, and to that point, 
It worked. I loved this portion of the game where she started to chase after us, but as soon as I was enjoying this small game of cat and mouse, it was cut short because as we rummaged through her residence, trying to find the necessary items to open another location, we're always put in a situation that deviates us from really having those momentous encounters with her because going back to Mr. X, I can't count the number of times that this tyrant scared the living crap out of me when I traversed through the RPD station. Just the footsteps he made was enough for me to stop what I was doing and try to find another route to avoid this behemoth. Well, to Alcina de Matresque, we could have played more along in the similar note, but instead ended so quickly. We didn't get the chance to have that long style of constant encounters like we had with Mr. X, because I do get it. The Dimitres storyline portion of Ari Village only constituted a quarter of the whole game, because it's only fair to highlight the other lords of this fine village. But the thing is, is that once it started to become really good facing Alcina de Matresque, it was over before we knew it. That stalker antagonist that we thought we'd have for the majority of this game would be over, and essentially changed into this huge dragon-like monster mutation. I mean, don't get me wrong, this looked absolutely amazing, but to have this transition from a humanoid being into this grand mutated monster just felt a little rushed. We didn't even really get the chance to see the step-by-step -step mutation from one form to another, but I get it. They wanted Alcina to literally have that over-the-top final boss battle with her, and to that, I can't fault them. But with that said, that definitely plays a factor as to why she was almost perfect. Because instead of having this grandiose dragon-like mutation, imagine having to fight her in a small cathedral setting where we found that dagger, and instead of her mutating into this large beast, instead we fought her in a still semi-humanoid form, but had her with both arms using retractable claws, her face distorted to look more like a half-human, half-vampiric beast, or maybe even a distorted version of her cracked face after we injured her with a poison dagger. This on top of a smaller setting, causing us to fight her her in a very claustrophobic environment, and to that I would say that would have been a pretty good final boss battle and ending to her, but that's just my opinion. Though in the end, this is only some of the factors that hinders her from being that perfect villain for this game, hence the quote, almost perfect. Well, to say the least, the storyline surrounding Alcina de Matresque was very straightforward. Born to a nobility of House de Matresque, her ancestors have been known to rule over the village region for centuries along with other lords of the area. But a small fun fact that needs to be noted here was Alcina herself was not from this village at all. So it begs the question on where she lived prior and what caused her to come back to her ancestral home. But as the story goes on with Ethan and Lady D, Ethan had to explore her residential castle to look for for his missing daughter Rose, and along the way we see some small details that surrounds the lore of Lady Alcina de Matrasque, finding out that she has been in prominence within the village region for the greater part of the last century, and with the maiden demo we played and learning more details as we played RE Village, we knew Alcina de Matrasque has been in this particular state since 1944, which we can assume was the exact year when Mother Miranda had infected her with a Cadeau parasite, all in hopes of using Alcina as a possible vessel for her deceased daughter Ava, though as shown in the very first part of the video quoting Mother Miranda, she would be an unfit vessel for Ava, and this was all due to her biology, having some hereditary anomalies. But we'll talk more about that portion of her character a little bit later in the video. So this state that Alcine has been after being infected with a Cadeau parasite would propagate her continual murder starting in the early 1950s and so on, using Maiden's blood for her winemaking process. A note regarding this info is stated here. The winemaking technique of Castle de Matrasque can be traced as far back as the 15th century. Long before the current occupants of the castle, Alcina de Matrasque uses this legendary yet peculiar technique to enrich the wine's flavor intensity and bestow it with a thick bouquet. Her best vintage is San Luis Virginis, meaning maiden's blood. It is kept in a special ornate bottle decorated with intricate silver flowers. And after playing the Maiden's demo, we knew Alcina would have the unfortunate Maiden's place inside wooden barrels in the underground wine cellar, there to have their bloods extracted and mixed in with grapes to make this fine wine that she was famous for. So does that mean that this wine here was Maiden's blood?
So as it obviously goes, Alcino would be the major obstacle that we had to go through in this portion of the game. But besides that, there wasn't any kind of plot twist that would have a heavy impact on our gameplay. It was straightforward, we find some notes detailing some of the lore behind the Dimitras family, having Ethan look for his daughter, open new locations by finding all items needed to open the main door, and having that final fight with her. Though I would say that the dagger we used for Alcina was a bit out of place, a note mentioning this weapon was introduced to us prior to our major confrontation with her. I heard there was something called the Dagger of Death's Flower somewhere in this castle. It's apparently an antique from the Middle Ages that's coated in a concoction of poisons from across the continent. It is said that it's been crafted to kill demons and monsters. It sounds fascinating, but no one knows where it is. Well, would you look at that? We found it. No. And so suddenly, we happen to find it inside a tomb held by the previous user of the weapon. A small concept art note briefs a small amount of detail surrounding this dagger, stating, The story behind this dagger is that it was once used by a man long ago to try to kill Dimitrescu. She sealed it away in the tower with his corpse, because it was still a threat to her. So having such a potent weapon that could harm Alcina Dimitrescu, why in the world would she still keep it within her castle, let alone have it readily available for anyone to find? find and use against her. But I digress, because here, this is just another factor that keeps Lady D from almost being a perfect villain, and once again emphasizing the word almost. What the fuck is this? And lastly, her relationship within the storyline was an interesting one. Of course, we get a glimpse of this with that initial meeting between the four lords and Mother Miranda, and highlighting the hostile interaction with Carl Heisenberg, which in her diary, she explains more in detail her true feelings beyond what we saw from that meeting, which which here it reads, We were all called in by Mother Miranda to decide the fate of that child's father. Just thinking of that family meeting makes me shudder, to think I am treated like a sister to those miscreants, especially Heisenberg. That riffraff wouldn't know proper manners if they slapped him in the face. I would have sliced him to ribbons if Mother hadn't stopped me. Why? Why did she treat me the same as them? She gave me this castle, obedient daughters, everlasting life, did she not? Am I not her favorite? Am I not special? I need a drink. So as we can see, there are some power dynamics that needed to be addressed here, with Alcina only seeing herself just below Mother Miranda. It appears that she just wants to be treated differently, or more so treated with preference. Maybe something to the likes on how she treats her own three daughters, who she appears to have a genuine love for for and would agonize when she finds out that you killed one of them. What have you done to my daughter? And that hostility to Heisenberg was not only a one-sided thing, because we learn later on that he had the same sentiment towards her as well. Lady, supersized bitch. Lady D's overall character design has to be one of the best in this franchise, heavily influenced from three different sources, with the first and most glaring was her height, stemming from the Japanese urban legend called Hachi Shakusama, a being known to be over 8 feet tall and usually wearing a long white dress. The second influence would be from Bram Stoker's Dracula, and then lastly Morticia Adams from the Adams family. And from all three, I can see how they came about with a final product, giving the antiquated Victorian fashion design, though the pale face and red lips paying homage to the vampiric style from Dracula, and of course the height of being 9 feet 6 inches tall. But even before that, there were initial concept designs of her character, still known to be vampiric in nature and using a scissor-like weapon. Her overall attire resembles the dark garment that her daughters used for the finalized version of the game. And lastly, her mutated dragon transformation was initially supposed to be for Mother Miranda, but was later decided to be move for Alcina instead. Also, another cool aspect to her character was the great voice acting and performance from Maggie Robertson, who portrayed Lady Alcina Dimitrescu in a great manner, and it was so good she won the best performance in VGA 2021, so congratulations to her. And to top this off, Miss Robertson gave a small but yet detailed description of Lady D, where she states, I love that duality about her. You're 
you're right. She's graceful, she's elegant, regal, and very composed. But underneath it all, I think she's very emotional. She's driven by her emotions, but she usually keeps a lid on it. She's concerned about appearance and presentation, but it's really bubbling and boiling underneath. And when she's able to just release it, it's really powerful and really aggressive because it's been there the whole time. And you know what? This statement here is the perfect representation of this moment. Alcina tried to restrain herself, but in the end had that outburst. Oh, oh. To hell with the ceremony! That man will pay for what he's done! Lady D's biology was very interesting to me because the game tries to explain the physical manifestation to her overall character, which we can begin with reading these notes here. Subject 181, Alcina D, Characteristics 44, Female, Noble Descendant, Not From The Village, Hereditary Blood Disease, Results Very High Affinity, No Loss Of Cognition, Arbitrarily Able To Control Body Transformation, Applied Cognition Control Procedure, Sent For Observation. This one of course references back to her infection with a Cado parasite that Mother Miranda gave her, in order to use Alcina as a vessel for her daughter Ava. Mother Miranda also even had a medical report specifically for Lady Demetrasque, which it states, Subject name Alcina Demetrasque, Cadeau Affinity, Most Favorable, Brain Functions, Normal, Regeneration Rate is Incredibly Fast, The Subject Can Heal Any External Wounds Within Seconds, and Grow Her Nails Into Claws In Mere Moments, Rapid Regeneration Also Means An Increased Body Size, Note Due To A Hereditary Blood Disease, The Subject Must Ingest Human Flesh And Blood On A Regular Basis To Maintain Regeneration Properties. I Suspect That If The Subject's Regeneration Is Not properly balanced, then she may mutate uncontrollably, an unfit vessel for Ava. Flesh, bones, I will devour all of you. So all these points made from the medical report explains the characteristics we saw from Lady Demetrasque, which explains her durability against conventional means, which is why we only saw the poison dagger to be the only one to really take its toll on her and weaken her enough for us to use regular weapons on. Also the lore of her vampiric nature is explained, needing to consume human flesh and blood to maintain her current state, which further explains her growth and pale skin. And if homeostasis isn't maintained with the consumption of flesh and blood, then we see that giant mutation that she goes through. And on a small note, Alcina does mention that the only other person who's seen her in that form was Mother Miranda. But in conclusion, overall Lady Alcina Dimitrescu was a great villain to have in Resident Evil Village, though some flaws may have hindered her in some capacity, which I wish we could have had more encounters with her, especially that stalker portion of the castle. But I digress, because in the end, Lady Alcina Dimitrescu was a great villain to have in Resident Evil Village. Anyways, what were your thoughts on Lady D? Did you guys like her, or do you guys believe that she could have had a larger role in this game? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed the content, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day, and this is Hey Deva, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Quiet now, child. Adults are talking.